Hey, everybody. Hello. Hey. Happy May 5th. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo. And a Friday. Yes. Welcome to Live at Five. Welcome to Live at Five. I'm Andy Lefkowitz. I'm Beth Stevens. We have a fantastic guest today. Yes, we have Sharon Wheatley here from the seven-time Tony Award nominated musical, Come From Away. Yay. Yes. We have some news. We sure do. By the way... It is pouring in New York City. It is. We were caught in the rain. I'm yes. just letting you know that's why we look like this. And by we, I mean me. Okay. <laughs> so, we have a very exciting new star heading to Aladdin. Yes. Kelly Leung is going to begin playing the title role at the Aladdin, the Broadway yes. Aladdin. Yeah. Um, new Amsterdam on June Theater. Th- right, on June 13th. That's so exciting. It really is. We love Kelly. Kelly. He was just in in transit. Yes. He's just staying on the Broadway road. Amen. As he should. He's going to get on that magic carpet. So that's really exciting. Nice. Um, I don't think we mentioned this yesterday. So that was the good news. We have some bad news, which happened after Live at Five yesterday. So we haven't mentioned it yet, which is that Amelie is going to close on Broadway on May 21st. So no Tony nominations for Amelie. Struggling a little bit at the box office. They're they're going to... Fingers crossed for a tour because it's it's a really yeah. moving musical and uh, yeah I'm hoping that folks get to see it um, in other you know mountings. It's the circle of life. It happens every yeah. year after the Tony nominations, oh, yeah. unfortunately. Anastasia is going global. Yes. Anastasia is taking over the world. I think you probably thought that was going to happen anyway. Right. They're going to mount productions across. All the continents. I mean, most of the continents, not yeah. Antarctica. But anyway, uh, yeah. So they haven't said when, but Anastasia will definitely be coming to you, especially yeah. if you are not in the States. No kidding. That's pretty exciting. And also, they're going to launch a national tour across the U.S. Of course. So of course everybody they are. will have a chance to see Anastasia. Yes, there's so many song titles flowing in my head yeah. right now, but we will just leave it at that. We sure will. <laughs> hey, Dave Malloy. Dave Malloy is oh. in. So he wrote Great Comet, and now yes. he's back in it. Uh, just briefly, though, as Pierre for Josh Groban, Tony nominee Josh Groban. So that's he's doing that now and will appear again. It's now through Tuesday and then yep. again May 16th. There's a little right. break and then he comes back. And so, our photographer Emilio took some great photos uh, of his curtain call last night. Yeah. So, so that's his first inside. time performing on a Broadway stage. Yes. Pretty exciting. Um, so there's a lot going on. There's a yeah. lot going on. I'm going to skip. I'm going to skip right, around. All right, all right. Yeah, we have a hearty laugh. I want to talk about Rick Ellis. Yes. I love Rick Ellis. Rick Ellis is a Tony winner uh, and a writer, and he wrote Jersey Boys and many, many, many things, and his late husband was Roger Reese, and he's writing a biography of Roger Reese, who, of course, was a wonderful actor who died recently. So that's pretty fantastic yeah. that we're going to get to sort of have a personal memoir uh, about Roger Reese, who died two years ago. Um, Julius Caesar's coming to Shakespeare in the Park, which we already knew. The rest of the cast has now been announced, right. um, mostly the ensemble, I think. Yes. Directed by Oscar Eustace, who's the artistic director of the Public Theater, and that starts May 23rd. It's just coming right up. Yeah. It feels like summer, right? And the cast is jam-packed. We have John Douglas Thompson, who was just nominated for his first Tony Award. For Nikki M. James. So, it's, uh, so we yeah, already Tony knew winner. those people, but now the yeah, rest of the cast Yeah, we have the rest of the out. ensemble. Full list is on the site. So, yeah, awesome. get to the park. Okay, check this out. Hello Again is a film. It's a film. It's based on Michael John Lacuse's musical. Yes, I learned how to say Michael John Lacuse. Look at that. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, so that's going to debut on June 4th at Toronto's Inside Out LGBT Festival, and it stars longtime Michael John Lacuse collaborator Audra McDonald, as well as Cheyenne Jackson, Martha Plimpton, and T.R. Knight. That's amazing. It really is. That's exciting. Yeah, I'm super pumped about it. I love that. So we've been talking a lot about Rise, which we what we were calling it Drama High. Yes. And we said it stars Josh Radner and Rosie Perez. I will watch anything with Rosie Perez. Oh my God, she's so compelling. I mean, come on. Um, so what are we saying about this? This is actually so debuting it's been on NBC. Up. It's yeah. happening. It's really happening. Yes, this fall. So it's like it's not Glee. So don't don't start thinking that. But it it is about high school drama students and their teacher. Right. Exciting. Okay, King Charles. This is pretty spectacular that this yes. happened, considering what happened afterward. Right. Mike Bartlett's King Charles III, which was in the West End and on Broadway, is a TV movie, and the trailer was just released. And of course, the star of that show, Tim Pigott Smith, died recently, unfortunately. Mm. Wonderful, talented person. And now we actually will have the actual movie, and that yeah. airs on May 14th at 9 o'clock, Eastern Standard 
time. Yeah, and what's pretty cool is that it's adapted by Mike Bartlett, who wrote the play, and it's directed by Rupert Gould, who direct the, directed the play as well. But it is it is not a stage performance. Yeah, so right? it's a TV movie. It's a TV movie. Yeah. Sharon's like here. I just yes. want to say Sharon's here. Yes. So let's speed through this. What else do yes. I have to say? We are yeah. asking you, you know, every Friday we ask you to do a culturalist challenge, and we're asking you to rank your top, this is hard, your top ten first-time Tony nominees. Can you do it? I can't do it. Oh my I'm going to be rearranging that all weekend. But, <laughs> well, what did I forget to tell you? There's a new Lola and Kinky Boots in the West End. It's Simon Anthony Road, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Looks and Verity right. Rushworth will appear as Lauren. And uh, yeah, they start in July. That's amazing. Yeah. Kinky Boots is a huge hit over there. It's a huge it hit really here. It is. It's a huge hit there. So congratulations to all of those people. I'm sure they'll do it. Full out. Hashtag full out. Amen. Um, we don't have our special... Hello, everyone who's watching, by the way. Hello, hello. And hey. what is Fulvia Sue going to do next? Something. And I hope she's singing. That's all I'm saying. She's what so a talented, talented. Such a talented woman. Sharon, are you We have ready? Sharon Wheatley here Ladies, from no, Comfort Malay. We're just going to clap for you. Yes. Yay, Sharon Wheatley. Bye, guys. Have a good yeah. weekend. Come on by. Hey, Sharon. I just learned so much. Oh, my like, goodness. I feel like you need to have a There's studio so much audience. I, I mean, know. I know That's you That's a good do. idea. But I would come. Oh, my goodness. We should make that happen. Yeah. So, Sharon, you're in the new Broadway musical, Come I'm so away. close to you. Oh, I sweetie. Like, oh. I love it. Let's make this happen. <laughs> Aw. Hug time at Live at Five. That's right. Hi. So, Come From Away was just nominated for seven Tony Can Awards. Can you believe... I can believe. I know, but we, it's just funny. Like it's all a of us, we're show. so happy. Um, so tell me how you're feeling today. Well, you know, it's funny because we joke that had we really known when we auditioned for La Jolla, because it's the same cast, right? Yeah. Had we really known where the show was going to end up, we would have right. been more nervous, I would right. think, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but. Part of the real joy and beauty of it is that we're all doing it together. So right. it's um, that makes it especially sweet. And we're really we're all so behind Jen Colella. Yes. And nominated for a nominated Tony. for Best Featured Actress, which she feels like the yes. captain of our team. So that's awesome. Right. And she was very sweet and humble about it. And she was like, "You guys could have been any of us." And you know, it's just it, it's you know, you just she's just the kind of person you just want to like lift her up. And uh, and David and Irene, the writers, yes. are just dear, and um, and obviously Junkyard Dog, our producers, we just right. love them. So anyway, it's uh, um, I've never had an experience before where I so loved going to work, um, not only because the story that we were telling was so great, but because the people there are so fun. Yeah, and, yeah. and that kind of reads to the audience because <laughs> you guys are this family up there, both yeah. within the story, and you can tell that you're all connected. When you see that kind of chemistry on a stage, it, yeah. it kind of feeds out into the audience, and I'm sure you guys feel that from your audiences yeah. nightly. Well, it was, you know, when we first started doing the show in La Jolla, we went through a six-week process with the show where we were really trying to figure out how are we going to tell the story with 12 actors and 12 chairs and two tables. And we figured out very quickly that less was more and that really it was about us and making sure that we could nail the dialect to turn our head and tell a different story. Would the audience really go with us and, and all of that. And so as we approached the opening, even just the first preview in La Jolla, I think we all felt protective of the work that we'd done but also because we loved it so much. And there's right. it's a very vulnerable feeling to let mm. the audience come in. And the very first audience, the very first day, had the exact same reaction that we've had every night, wow. everywhere we've been. I mean, it's really, it's a very universal story. Right. And I think people have so many feelings about that day totally. already. So it's nice to get to tell uh, the good side. Oh my goodness. Um, we have some questions here. Um, Brad wants to know, have you performed with any understudies yet? We have. That's um, cool. Audience yes. members love understudies, love bringing right. them on. It's fun. Uh, you know, we have to do a different kind of rehearsal when understudies go on. Um, for example, there's a scene where um, myself and Lee McDougal walk on chairs and the actors in the show are... are I'm not trying to give it away or anything, right, but anyway, right. it's important that we run it. Let's just put it right. that way, uh, because it could be sort of dangerous. So when we have understudies come in, it, we do a lot of like chairography mm. to make sure that you know this is where this plane goes, and it's a very tight 
show right. and there's not a moment to look at your notes because right. you don't really leave stage. Totally. So. Yeah, well, Sharon, I want to learn a little bit more about you. Oh. I looked at your bio and you've been in some pretty massive musicals on Broadway. You were in Les Mis. Mm -hmm. You were in the original production of Cats. Yeah, I closed um, it. Oh my, you were in the final production? I was oh at the Winter gosh. Garden that night. Yeah, it was it was incredible. Oh my god! It was really something, and I thought I will never top that. And wow. then, I, and then the crowds that come from away. I thought, wow. Anyway. Yeah. What, what I, one of the things I love about Come From Away is that it's this very kind of intimate musical, yeah. but it's it's bursting with pride and and joy and very powerful words and music, and that just kind of it kind of takes over the theater in, in, in an unusual way because it's not about spectacle. It's about mm -mm. powerful storytelling. Yeah, I agree. And I think it's about the audience. There's not a lot of time to applaud. There's It really just happens to you. Right. And so by the time we get to the end, it's, it does seem like the audience can't hold it in right. anymore. So yeah. I always joke and say I need earplugs for the yeah. call. It's, it's oh quite gosh. something. That's pretty exciting. It is. It's great. So Sharon, you wrote a memoir. I did. Um, can you tell me about it? Yeah. Uh, it's called Till the Fat Girl Sings. Okay. And it was published a while ago. So it kind of stops when my first daughter was born. And she's now... <laughs> 19 so oh my gosh. <laughs> I need to write another one there's a whole second version of what right. went, but the but what it focuses on is that I grew up uh, overweight with these great big sort of glamorous dreams and when I was asked to write it I really lucked out they came to me and said will you do this and so I focused on um, kind of my body my how I felt about my body what was said about my body, what I could do with my body, what I couldn't do with my body, right. and how it impacted my, it, it, sort of my body as my product in mm -hmm. the business even, and what did that mean? And and it was a joy to write, it was really a joy to present to the world. Uh, I got so much uh, feedback from it from people who could relate from various different ways that they felt less than as a kid, right. I would say. Mm -hmm. um, and then it, you know, I it was uh, it, it's then afforded me other opportunities, which has been also a really great thing. Nice. Yeah. Now something else that you've done, you've written for Kristen Chenoweth. I have. Can you tell me a bit about that? <laughs> uh, yes. I mean, first of all, you know, she's this big, right? And she she's weighs like peanut. this much. Yeah. Right. Um, she. Uh, I really just kind of lucked out. I was brought in um, to write for one of her concerts and uh, through Richard J. Alexander, who is someone who I knew when I was doing Les Mis. And uh, it, it, I was brought in through sort of a funny backdoor kind of way. And then uh, Kristen and I just hit it off. And so I ended up writing for some of her concerts. And then I wrote something that she did for The Tonight Show that ended up going crazy viral. It was political. And... Uh, and so then that got me in in Los Angeles a little bit, and I was able to get some representation. I then wrote a pilot for her, which we then shopped around. So I've worked with her quite a bit. Right. Uh, I love writing for Kristen. I think that we have a lot in common. We both grew right. up in sort of these conservative families, mm -hmm. but we are not really conservative people okay. necessarily. Right. And I love pushing her to the line of when she's like, do you think I can say that? <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have that person to bounce things off of yeah. you feel like you can trust. You're right, right, right. She's a good girl. Oh, I really so love nice. her. Yeah. And we have a question about the show here. Um, Peyton Cole says, how has this story affected you personally? Come from away. You know, it's a, that's a good question for me specifically right. because my storyline has to do with is a woman who has sort of a reinvention in life. And uh, this woman, Diane, who I play, ends up meeting someone and falling in love and having a, a second marriage. And for me, one of the lines that I say in the show is, you can be whoever you want to be. And one of the things that happened 
to me with me during the course of the show is that I did end up ending my marriage and getting divorced and I'm now with someone else and wow. I just remarried. So, Congratulations. Thank you. Just like two weeks ago. That's so, oh my gosh, that's I amazing. Know. Anyway, so, you know, it's been a very interesting journey for me and I have a lot of contact with Diane, who right. I play, mm. and uh, even in so much that she's given me a little advice as I was going through things and focusing on the kids and, you know, that sort of stuff. So, so the real Diane you're talking about. The real Diane. Wow, that's incredible. Isn't playing, that incredible? Playing a real person yeah. and being able to connect with them I know. contact them. Yeah. Is this the first time you've experienced that with royalty? And it's very <laughs> yeah. rare. Yeah, I mean, there was really no uh, Gumby cat to call right. or Eponine right. Or, <laughs> right. or person in the back in Phantom who yeah. I played. Right. Well, you never know, right? <laughs> right. No, it's so interesting. Yeah, it's not. And, 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 you know, many of us have had a lot of contact with the people right. that we play in the show. Wow. So I would say... Uh, even just, I was inspired by the script and by her storyline, but also just particularly by her. Right. Wow. Here, um, oh, Mar Maribel says, please tell us more about cats. <laughs> Do you have any anecdotes you want to share from your experience? <laughs> it's kind of neat that you're debuting this role in the season when Cats is being revived on Broadway. I know. My daughter, I have a nine-year-old, she keeps saying, don't you want to do Cats again? And I was like, honey, that was like... 40 pounds ago and 20 years ago right, and right. on every count, no. Right. It's a, it's a one-time experience. I think a lot of folks would probably feel that way because it's such a yeah. unique um, type of role. Yeah. Know. It was incredibly fun and I was doing it at the time when it wasn't cool to do cats at all. Okay. Like I remember when I got it, someone actually said to me, oh, I didn't know people still did that show. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, I had just beat out like 50 other people to right. get that part, you know, and I was like, right. they do, and I, especially on payday, I'll tell you, like actually Seriously. people really still do it. Yeah. Uh, but it was terrific fun, and uh, and I goofed around more than I should have. Actually, I really learned a lesson on that show yeah. about not uh, goofing around on stage. I had to really sort of pay the piper and write letters of apology because I did, right. like, that's a whole other story. But yeah. it was funny, but oh it was bad. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, Bradley wants to know, do you have a dream role or dream co-star? Well, I would love to do something with Kristen. Oh I think gosh. just because, the, you know, I like her so much. Yes. And we have such a similar sensibility. But dream role, I've done so many of the sort of old school musicals. Mm -hmm. And Come From Away is the first time I've created. So right. I would say my dream role mm -hmm. is something I don't even know it exists. Right. And for somebody to come to me and say this is something that we want to do, how do you feel about it, and, right. and to create something is really what I would want to do. Totally. Oh, um, Lucas wants to know about the Tony Awards. How are you feeling about, uh, you guys are going to be performing on the Tony we Awards. Is, that must be incredibly exciting for you. Yeah, I mean, it's like the little 12-year-old in you says yes. like, yay, you know. <laughs> Oh I did never think it would happen. And I think a lot of us feel like that. And the great thing about our cast is that nobody's really cool. I mean, Jen Colella is pretty cool, but even she's not cool, like too cool for school. We're right. all so geekily excited to oh do it and gosh. to do it together. Yeah. So it's going to be awesome. You guys are just kind of like the ultimate ensemble. We and I feel are. Like it's such an ensemble work. Yeah. And it's rare to see that. I know. You know, I mean, it, it just must be one of a kind for you. It is, and it's even the way that the producers and, and Chris Ashley and Kelly Devine and Ian Isadrath, our music supervisor, right. the way everybody treats us, because we've been together for two years now, mm -hmm. uh, we really just have so many inside jokes, right. and we can finish each other's sentences, and they know what our response is going to be. If somebody gives us a note, they'll know, you know, Chad Kimball's going to say this, Astrid Van Weeren's going to say this, Sharon Wheatley's going to respond in this way. Like, we've been through it, right. all of us. Right. And then we even went to Gander together. Oh, like, we have all... That's incredible. It is. And it's wow. and there's um And it might sound hokey or like it's put on, but it's truly not. Hmm. These, like when I got married, right. they were all there. Oh my God. That's who I invited. That, wow. you know, because they've been through it. Right. And, you know, it's just weeping. I mean, right. we were just. <laughs> when you build something like that together, yeah. I, mean, I can only imagine how close you That's guys right. get. That's it, right. And my wife was the original production stage manager 
in La Jolla. She's gone on to do, no. she's a production stage manager on Broadway now at okay. Glass Menagerie. She did wow. Evo's, Crucible, she did Evo's View from the Bridge on Broadway oh last my year. God, those are gorgeous productions. I mean. And Glass Menagerie is incredible yeah. as well. She's super fancy. Wow. So they, You're pretty fancy. Ooh, Come on. Uh, they, but yeah, so they all love Martha. Right. And, you know, so, I mean, the wedding was incredibly fun. Wow. Yeah. So lastly, Sharon, if you can tell audience members what they might expect from Come From Away, why it's the right show for people to go to, what would, your, what would you say? I would say the reason why Come From Away is the right show to go to is because you're going to leave changed in the best way. And, and by changed, I mean chances are you might want to hug the person that you're sitting next to. You know, I think that 9-11 left a scar on everybody. And that's what we've really learned as we've done the show is that it doesn't matter how old you were or even if you weren't born. It's a part of American history for people who weren't born yet. And you, you're hearing about it. This is a way of getting to experience that day through a different camera lens and understanding that on a different part of the globe, people were actually doing wonderful things on a mm. terrible day. And they did it because that's what you do. They felt like that's what you do. You just take people in and you don't ask questions based on their religion or their race or their uh, sexual orientation or anything. You just bring them in and everybody needs to take a shower. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs to eat something. Everybody needs to just be seen and heard. And that's what the show's about. Right. And in 2017, the way the climate is today, the political climate, I can't imagine a more important show today. Yeah, and it's really... The great thing about it is completely non-political. Right, it goes right. across all political uh, um, uh, inclinations, mm -hmm. and it just it's humanity. It is. It's just right. about being a good person because yeah. everybody wants to believe that they'd be that person that would take somebody in and take care of them, right. and that that you'd be able to receive that as well. Right. And the interesting thing is people talk about the days that they spent in Newfoundland being taken care of that way and how they came back to the States and actually felt guilty because they had such mm. a good time. Wow. Yeah. Because they're doing well by others. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So that's why, yeah. I, that's why I think it's more than just a show. It's kind of an experience. Right. And we go on it and we bring the audience with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I just, I promise you will be moved and not manipulated, but genuinely, organically moved. Guys, head to the show in Feld Theater and see Come From Away. Sharon, thank you so much for being here oh today, my God, sweetheart. Oh, so welcome. You bet it. And have a great weekend, you guys. Bye, everybody. Take have care. fun. Go buy your tickets Do to it. the show. Please. Wow. Before it wins a bunch of Tony Awards and it gets really hard, <laughs> even harder to buy tickets. That's right. And then come to the stage door. We'll say hi. Say hello. Closed.